All right, so I've received my Cadillac ATS calipers. These use an M14 bolt, so I'm going to have to bore this out to a larger size. I've got a drill bit here that is a 35 64 so I'm going to bore it out to that, and then if need be, I'll go out the full 14 millimeters with the next size drill bit. However, I'm thinking the 35 64 might actually be just the right size for the M14 bolts I have, which is unusual because you would assume that it would have to be a 14 mil. It's just right. So up until now, drilling into the spindle has been very easy. And that last hole was actually very frustrating to make. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a unit bit. This uh, is actually a little too big. It goes to 916, but I'll start the 916 just to make a groove to kind of center my drill bit. And hopefully that will give me a much better drilling experience alright let's try this out Gotta get me a bigger batter drill. Alright, so I ended up actually having to bore my spindles out even larger than I thought I would. I got up to the M14 and I still could not get the bolts to line up. And what I've realized is even in the case of the ATS, it doesn't really align to the Tacoma spindle perfectly. It's close, but it's slightly off. As a matter of fact, it may actually be exactly the same as the CTSV after all. Um, so I've actually had to bore this out to, I want to say, yeah. I've had to bore this out to 11 sixteenths. Now, because what I have for doing this is a unibit, it's probably more like 5 eighths in the center, so you might get away with just boring it completely through to 5 eighths. But I had to go to the 11 sixteenths with the step bit that I have, and it worked on the other side, so I know that this side is going to work, plus I've already test fit it. So let's go ahead and place first our bolts. When you're mounting these calipers, you're going to need to use a couple washers. You could just get a shorter bolt and not need the first two washers, which I'm using to just space the bolt off of the rotor itself, right? I'm just trying to keep it from hitting. I really could go down to one washer and still not hit, but I worry that in the event that this rotor were to expand the track, if it were to expand sufficiently, it might touch because without that second washer, it does come very close. Now there's another washer that's going to go between the spindle and the caliper, and that's just kind of spacing the caliper out so that it's centered over the rotor. This is slightly thicker um, than one of these, but not as thick as two of them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this here for now, as is. Then I'll bring the other one. 
and do basically the same thing. And as you can imagine, it's going to be difficult to get all this stuff like this with that washer there and not have it fall out of position, but I managed it on the other side. I think I'll manage it here. So here comes my caliper. Try to keep it as close to the rotor as possible. All right, we're reaching the first bolt. Really got to get your head in here, unfortunately. All right, so the first one is in, the other one fell out the bottom, but that's okay. You can do them one at a time, probably get better results anyway. All right, so let me just, I'm gonna kind of slide it in, put the other one in with the caliper, lift it up out of the way, and then just try to line it. Got it. Here comes the caliper. All right, both of these are in. So here's the tricky part. These things got to get torqued um, per what I found online to 95 foot pounds and you should use red Loctite. So in order to do the red Loctite, I have to take them back out. But it's much easier to do this right with one already in. So I'm going to go ahead and back out the top one, Loctite it, then turn it down and then I'll do the bottom one. So I've got some uh, red Loctite 271 what I'm going to be using. Let's go ahead and do that. And check your rotor, make sure you've got clearance. I think we're good.
All right, so with the caliper mounted and the rotor spinning freely, I'm gonna go ahead and do the brake pads and then I can move on to the lines. Now that I have both calipers on, I need to do the brake lines and brake fluid. Now if you just go and disconnect your brake lines, they're going to start leaking and you're going to have to very rapidly try to put on the new lines and that's kind of foolhardy. So what I like to do is I'd like to empty the reservoir first and for that I have a transfer pump. I'm going to use a transfer pump to transfer all the liquid into this empty water bottle and then once I've emptied the reservoir, I'll open the lines individually and drain them out into the same bottle. Let's get started with that. Now, there's always a little mesh in here. That mesh is to keep grit from uh, getting in here. So you have to remove that. Man, that fluid is dirty. Now that the reservoir has been drained, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the lines from the old calipers and just let them drain out into that water bottle. Note that I've got a couple of 2x4s holding it up because otherwise it wouldn't stand on its own and I risk spilling brake fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that apart and then I'll pump the brake in order to drain that line. This will always leak somewhat. So in order to remove the brake line, I've got to first remove this clip back here then I'm going to hold this while I undo the 10 millimeter hard line from the Tacoma back here and with that removed I'll be able to come in and put my new brake line there but first I've got to get this clip out of the way
So unfortunately, when I was installing the new brake line on the passenger side, I could not get it onto the existing hard line on the truck. And the reason is because the last time I did this, I must have over tightened the fitting that went here and it caused this nut to slide forward over the flare and actually flared out. So it doesn't fit inside the brake line. So unfortunately, unless I plan to cut this, put another fitting and reflare it, the only thing left to do is really to make my own line. So I've gone ahead and purchased the line and I've purchased a simple tubing bender. I'm going to go ahead and bend up a brand new line to replace this one. So I've got these two bending pliers here. You'll use a roller die that's intended for the diameter of the tube that you're using. In my case, this is a 316, so that's the die that I have on there. It's a very simple tool to use. You can kind of just place the pipe like that and then push down on it, and bend it however you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just follow the same bending that's been done on the stock line. But first, let's go ahead and remove the sticker. All right, so I'm gonna kind of, this is a bit of a 3D bend here, but you gotta look at it in two dimensions. So you'll start here and make the first bend in that direction, All right? So let's put this right up against the other one. Flare to flare. I know I need to bend somewhere around there. It helps if you have a Sharpie kind of guide your bends. And this is a little bit bigger than 90 degrees. It's not a proper 90 degree angle. So let's try for that. First bend needs to be centered right about here. Bending about what I needed to be, maybe a little bit more bent than the original, but that's fine. that down. The only downers, I'm pretty sure this line is way too long. Or rather, it's about an inch too long. The original line is about 11 inches long, and this one's about 12 inches, so it's the unfortunate reality of the situation.
right, let's test it out. So if you look where this shiny fitting is in this tube that goes there, that's the new tube that I bent up with the tube bending pliers. It came out perfectly, I'm very happy with that. Now that the Cadillac ATS calipers and the StopTech stainless steel brake lines are installed on the truck, it is now time to go ahead and bleed the brakes. So the first step is going to be to fill the reservoir with brake fluid. Be very careful with this step, brake fluid is highly corrosive. It will eat through your paint. Pour this stuff carefully and decisively. I'm just going to pour until you hit the max line that's on the side of this. I'm going to go ahead and remove this mesh because what I'm pouring in here is clean fluid. So. Alright, so now that I have the brake calipers mounted on and I have the brake lines mounted on, I'm going to go ahead and bleed them. So I've already gone and added fluid to the reservoir, pumped the brakes a couple times to just release the lines on the reservoir and lock them back up. Now I'm going to do the calipers. So what I've got here is just a tube going through the cap of a water bottle that I drilled a hole in and the tube is connected to the brake caliper bleeder screw. I've got a hollow socket on that. So if you look, you see that my tube goes through the socket, which is hollow. This is what I'm going to use to open this up. So right now I'm just going to crack it, then I'm going to go pump it. And I'll come back and lock it, pump it, crack it, etc. You can bleed by yourself doing this. Although having someone to pump it for you is obviously a little bit faster and more efficient. Alright, that's open. Get pumping. All right, pump it up. Hold it. Pump it up. Hold it. And pump it up. Hold it. Okay, I'm gonna transfer to the other line. Give me a second. Uh, 
cleaning up some brake fluid here because brake fluid is really corrosive so if it gets on anything it'll eat the paint off of it. It's pretty nasty stuff. All right, pump it up. Hold. All right, pump it up. Hold. Pump it up. How does the pedal feel? It's harder. All right. All right, now I'm gonna go to the other side. All right, pump it up. Hold it. Let me really quickly pour some extra fluid in the reservoir. Pump it up. All right, hold it. It's getting real hard, huh? Yeah. Perfect. Like moving the car, not even moving the Beautiful, that's exactly how it should feel. It Sorry. We're almost done. We've got one more side to bleed and we're done. Alright, pump it up. Hold it. Pump it up. Okay, hold it. Pump it up. Hold it. Pump it. We're done. Is that everything? Yeah, that pedal is rock solid, isn't it? Yeah. Oh man. Pretty sure this thing is all said and done.